So, down here, we can see... Oh, actually, he might have something to say now that we went to the catacombs? Mm -hmm. No. Sometimes you'll say things after you see certain things. Like down here, as I noted, this bonfire is rather special. This is a firekeeper, as referred to in the description of the Estus flasks. You can reinforce your Estus flasks by giving them firekeeper souls, which you can get from either killing a firekeeper uh, or finding them throughout the game. And we're actually going to be kind of sequence breaking a little to get one here in a minute. Can't talk to her. She's mute. So, there will be other uh, NPCs at this place. As a matter of fact, look at this. Liar ahead. That's referring to one of the NPCs. Uh, you can see that had the little skeleton face. That means it's a player message. Uh, and the rating there was... Uh, you can vote them up and down with an item you can get later. But it doesn't show you whether the rating is positive or negative unless you use the Divine uh, Guidance spell. So this is an elevator. We try to use this lever, it doesn't move. If the elevator is down, this will call it back up. I like the motion blur that happens when you're in an elevator. So, this is a new area. An area you're not supposed to come here yet. But, let's do a little bit of a thing to speed up our travel here. If we push the button again, the elevator goes back up. Don't jump down there, you'll die. Because I'm doing something that's probably going to kill me, I uh, might as well send that back up. Let's get some items here. The Soul of a Nameless Soldier is an upgraded version of the uh, Soul of a Lost Undead. And the large Soul of a Lost Undead is just more souls. Uh, I think this is 400, and I think these are 800. Uh, they don't really have anything but a basic description, so... There's not much point in looking at them. They're just different denominations. You can kill these guys, but they just kind of leave you alone. They're only worth like 20 souls anyway. So these are the new Londo ruins. There's quite a lot of items you can get over here. Um, but the area doesn't start in proper until we cross uh, that bridge over there, which we'll be doing in a moment. That bridge. And I suppose we might as well do that before we do anything else. There's another thing we want to do down here aside from going over there. But there's a few items we can get. Over here, this, this guy's friend has an S-Stock, which is a thrusting sword. Thrusting swords are like spears in that you can use them while blocking with a shield. We don't have the stats for it. They're basically rapiers. Um, I'm just going to equip this one to kind of show you what I'm talking about. I'm still blocking and I can attack with it. Pretty good, pretty good weapons. I got thrown a tantrum there. So over here we can see this guy in a in a in an urn. If you see a guy in an urn, it means that, you know, there's items on the guy almost always. So this guy has transient curses. Um What these items do, these are kind of key to this area here. Allows the engagement with ghosts. So this kind of tells you that there's ghosts here, I guess. Um they will give you basically a kind of a a temporary curse <laughs> and this is basically just an arm from a cursed guy just put into a thing uh, you can't damage the undead at all can't block their attacks and you can't use your poise uh, for avoiding their attacks if you aren't cursed curse is also a status effect we'll see later need hope yeah, I guess so so we're just doing a little bit of sequence breaking here and running over to an area to get something special. We probably aren't supposed to get it at this point. Just try to avoid the ghosts here, and run over to here. Let's see if we can get out of here. Nope. Pushed me off the edge. But since I only had 38 souls, I don't really care. <laughs> 38 souls is nothing. So. Do you have anything else to say there? Oh, have you seen that terribly morose lass? The fire keeper. She's stuck keeping that bonfire lit. Sad, really. She's mute and bound to this forsaken place. 
They probably cut her tongue out back in her village, so that she'd never say any god's name in vain. How do these martyrs keep chugging along? I'd peter out in an instant. <laughs> Anything else? Mm -hmm. So he, he, I guess he explains why she's mute. Um, so let's go... Well, first, let's look at that Firekeeper's soul. Boost power of an Essence Flask. This is a long-lost Firekeeper. If you kill a Firekeeper, it'll tell you which Firekeeper it belongs to. Um, corporeal manifestation of her bonfire. And uh, you can use it to get humanity and heal, but it's really a waste to do it that way. What you can do with it is reinforce your Essence Flask. And as you can see at the bottom there, my Essence Flask is plus one, which means it heals for more. Uh, you're not supposed to get this one until later in the game, I would assume, uh, considering how difficult the enemies are in the area. But, uh, they, uh, and now that, because I called this back up when I went down there, I can actually go back down again, because I want to go back down here, even though I'm not going to get those 38 souls. We'll be getting another one fairly soon, uh, the Firekeeper soul. Now, as we can see in the distance, our... Our, uh, our blood stain over there, which has our meager amount of souls on it. As you can see, it's before that bridge uh, leading to that place where we got it. And I did it again. I really shouldn't do that. So now we're going to do some for real sequence breaking. Since we have the master key, we can come back down here. And, oh, you know what? I forgot to show this guy off. Down here at the end of this little stairway down here. There's an NPC stuck in a cage. Hmm? Well, this is unusual. You haven't lost your head. And more importantly, you're free. How on earth? Well, I shouldn't pry. I'm Ricky of I? I was once an established smith, but look at me now. Can you believe it? I like how echo echoey Rickard is. So this guy is, uh, well, let's talk to him some more. Hmm? What is it? Have you... Oh no, don't worry, I've no intention of escape. It's safe here, I can't bear the thought of going hollow out there. Although, I must admit, I've not much to occupy myself. How about this? I could forge your weapons, albeit with rather minimal tools. I'll show you what made me the best in Vinay. So this guy's the first blacksmith we can actually talk to, well, this early in the game at least, um, he is also a sorcerer. Um, this is the first point at which you can repair your gear, um, but our gear is not very badly damaged. Uh, we can also, if we had any items to do so, we could reinforce our weapons, which we'll get a better uh, example, and we'll get told about that later. What is it? There's nothing to talk about. We're both cursed, undead. But what's there really to moan about? He seems rather up about this. He also is a sorcerer. Vinheim is a sorcerer's school. Um, he sells a couple copies of some sorceries, which are actually twice as expensive as other people who sell them. And he sells a sorcerer's catalyst. We can't use any right now because we don't have the intelligence to even use Soul Arrow. Um, and we'll be finding the guy who sells these for cheaper later. However, it is sometimes good to have multiple copies of the same spell, especially... Smithing helps soothe my nerves. Don't let me wither away out of idleness. Especially very basic spells, like, uh, like Soul Arrow. Um, so, now that we've collected, I think, all the air... There's a couple more, um, transient curses over there I could pick up. Did I get the... I got the sword and the souls, so yeah, let's just do that uh, sequence breaking I was talking about. Over here, if you don't have the master key, this door will be locked. And later in the game, you can unlock this door from the other side. But let's just sequence break here, using the master key, and go into the Valley of the Drakes. This is a very dangerous area, but it's kind of a an in-between area. Kind of a, a path from one area to another. Here we got a large soul of an aimless soldier, indicating that this is a more advanced area, which gives you, uh, whoa, 
a thousand souls, I believe. And over here, we have an entrance into another new area. Green stuff. But over here, there's some very tough enemies that I just kind of want to get a look at before I flee in terror. Yeah, we see them over there. These are like, uh, I, I forget what they're called, but they have big clubs. They're like some barbarians. This is the exit of Blight Town. You're supposed to come out this this door, leaving Blight Town. Uh, you can come into it backwards and skip a bunch of stuff, though, if you really wanted a sequence break that way. But it's actually harder to go through that way, and you miss a lot of good stuff doing that. Um, I prefer to just do it normally. So let's just keep going along this this ledge here. And it's basically just your way back up to Firelink after going through Blight Town, because it would be very, very time-consuming to go back the other way. So here we can see uh, something interesting in the distance there. Kind of looks like a, like a skeleton or a tree or something like that. Well, getting close to it, we can see exactly what it is. It is the skeleton of a, a dragon. Or a drake or whatever. Um, and there's a bunch of items around him. Now, let's just go past him a little bit. You can see down there there's a bridge and a couple of towers. Let's get a bit closer. And you can see there's a blue thing on the bridge. And over here we can see one a little bit more clearly. These are the eponymous drakes. Uh, that the valley is named after. They are very tough. They fly around, uh, they shoot lightning at you. They're worth about a thousand souls, which should indicate how, how uh, powerful they are. Um, and even later in the game, they're just kind of a pain in the ass to fight. Um, but this is, this is another shortcut between areas here. But over there we can see that there's uh, some items on a bridge. There's actually some items behind that guy, but I'm not going to bother going to get that yet. So, the reason we're here is this here. Now these these guys, uh, well you can kind of guess what's going to happen. We can pillage this corpse pretty, corpse pretty easily. Just get a Soul of a Proud Knight, which is, again, an upgraded version of these soul items. Um, if we go into that little crook in his arm, and touch, well, even if we just walk into there, the dragon, well, I suppose let's demonstrate. We'll come to life. Just want to pick up the items and then get killed. And he'll puke that, that poison stuff on us. Uh, he will be active for the rest of the game. And you can kill him with a bow or something or just walking up to him and attacking him. Not really worth doing it at this point in the game, and I don't think my character has the capability of doing it, but let's take a look at those items we picked up. The Astoria's Straight Sword, and as you can see, that's why I was raising my, uh, my, uh, dexterity, because it requires 10 strength, 10 dexterity, and 14 faith. Perfect for this character. Um, it also has scaling with strength, dexterity, and faith. Uh, and as you can see from the auxiliary effects, it, it, deal, it is a holy weapon, and it also deals 80 physical damage and 80 magic damage. And as a comparison, um, that is actually more than the Zweihander does right now, which is the strongest weapon you have in your inventory, and it's about twice as much as something like the Morning Star, or any of our other weapons, really. Um, straight sword with unknown knight likely one of Astora's superiors. So it's got a powerful blessing on it. This is a unique item, um, meaning it's harder to upgrade. It's not necessarily a weapon that you're going to be using the whole game, but it is very strong at this point. The other weapon we picked up, not weapon, but item we picked up. Oh, I never looked at this Caduceus round shield. It's basically just a, a worse version of the shield we already have equipped, except that it, it uh, has better magic block. Uh, it has lower stability, and stability is really the important stat on shields for the most part, unless you're blocking magical uh, attacks 
magic fire or lightning damage, I suppose. Because the stability uh, dictates how much stamina you lose when you block. Now, if you're not blocking with it at all, then you don't really care. Like, if you're using a two-handed weapon and you still want to have a shield equipped, um, well, there's a couple of shields that you're going to want to use. And it's... Uh, you made with the uh, giant trees which uh, block magic damage. Now this is the other weapon we picked up, the Dragon Crest Shield, and this is the first shield that we've found. You can find other shields earlier than this that have physical block 100%, which means we'll block all damage from a physical attack. Um, it also has 85% fire block, which is extremely good, and 55 stability, which is, you know, way better than the one we have. It weighs slightly more, but that's not big of a that big of a deal. It requires 10 strength, but we start with 12, so it's fine. So we just picked up two very good items from doing that. Um, so, let's go demonstrate how good these weapons are. Or, we can go see if uh, Cool Crestfallen has anything else to say. You again? There's nothing to speak about, really. Oh, actually, something strange did happen. That crow flew off with somebody in its clutches. I think it was a man curled up in a ball. Stranger things have happened, right? No, maybe not. If you remember, the crow is the one that brought us here. Um, that is a clue to something later. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's done. So now that we're done in this area, we could go down to the catacombs because we have a weapon with the holy trait, and that is actually the thing you need to kill the skeletons um, permanently. But I don't think we want to be doing that just yet. You know, old Petrus doesn't have anything else to say there. So let's go up to the tippy top of the town. Now one of the things I like is how, how I guess simplistic the naming thing is. Lordran is the is the, the land of lords, so it's called Lordran. The Undead Burg is a city of undead. So it's the Undead Burg. Blight Town has a bunch of poison in it, so it's Blight Town. Oops. Not very creative. So you can see dealing a significant amount of damage. And you can actually see I'm getting that bonus that you get for um, for killing guys with the uh, reposts or backstabs when I use the thrust attack, which kills in one hit. This is a straight sword, by the way, which is one of my favorite uh, favorite classes of weapons. Probably, in general, my favorite uh, attack animation set of any of the weapons. It's got uh, a thrust attack as its strong attack, and its weak attack as its slash. You can hit multiple enemies with it, and I like the, the way you can kind of string together different types of attacks. And I especially like the, the, um, the three-hit strong attack combo there because it includes a slash in there which can hit a lot of guys now so here we have one of one of these soldiers one of the things you can do with this guy is you can just go up here where the the firebomb dude was and jump off the edge and attack him killing him instantly it actually deals damage to us but that's fine over here uh, oh we can't see it from here we can see that there's an item at the end of that, uh, the bottom of the aqueduct, so... Let's jump over this gap here. If you fall down there, you die. And you can get... In this, a Ring of Sacrifice. Now, if we were to drop our humanity, um, that we got from killing the boss in the Undead Asylum at that, that nest, uh, it will give us one of these... And what it does is uh, sacrificial rite of Velka, the goddess of sin. We'll learn more about that goddess later. If you die, nothing. Uh, you don't lose anything, but the ring is destroyed. Ooh. 
Which means it's it's a, a temporary thing. A lot of players might think that there's no way out of there if they get there through falling down, for example, which can happen. Um, but you can just jump across there. It's like a five foot gap. So up here is the waterway that we were referring to before. It's kind of an aqueduct. It's sort of a sewer thing, but it's not a sewer, it's, it's an aqueduct. In here is a rat. Animal type enemies have the odd property in that they will drop humanity, which makes the least amount of sense to me. But they do it fairly often, and uh, you can basically get infinite humanity if you wanted to farm it from those. It's the end of the waterway here, we can see a door that does not open from this side. It's another shortcut we'll get to later. So let's go up here. Good luck. So this is the undead berg. So now we can see immediately accosted by undead mans. And you'll see me using these the thrust attack almost to exclusive uh, almost to exclusively using that. Simply because it gives you the bonus experience and it mostly kills enemies in one or two hits. It is also just what I'm comfortable with. That's what I like to do. Now you can still backstab and stuff with these, with this weapon, but I mean, as you can see, it's not really that important. Here's another fog door. But there's kind of a secret over here. If you break these barrels, you can jump down onto this little ledge here. This gives you another large soul of a lost undead, and we can jump down further to go to this area. Just kind of a side area. Just got some items and stuff. If you look down from up there, you can see this this body here hanging off the edge, which is another soul. And then over here, you can see some guys. Um, if you look down from above, you can also see these guys too. And as a matter of fact, you can see some other guys hanging on the edge there. Let's not keep them waiting. One of the things you can do, though, if you know that they're there, is you can kind of get the drop on them a little bit. By just hitting them while they're on the railing and then knocking them straight off. That there was, is the leap attack. Um, if you push forward while doing a strong attack, it will do that. Here we get the rubbish. I can hear a guy walking around. Has no value. Who in the right mind would bother carrying this around? Perhaps you need help. And it actually does have a use. Um, regardless of what it's telling you there. Let's not go up there yet. Well, actually, that's, that's a different area I'm thinking of. Um... Where's that guy? I can hear a guy walking around. I thought he was down here, but I guess he's on those stairs right there that we came up earlier. Alright. Sometimes the guy will come at you, like, falling off of the edge or something there. So, let's climb up this ladder again. There's that body there. This is what I meant by seeing it here. Now we are currently above the stairs we came up. What does this message say? Try front. I don't know what that means. But here, we can get a uh, humanity sprite from that guy. So there he is. There's the guy. So let's go through this door. Around the corner here, we can see immediately that there's a an item on a body. Now this room, you can hear some guys walking around above us. Now this room, you can see uh, this over here, and it looks like you can jump across the gap there, uh, but you can't. You can get on this roof of this building further into the level and. Uh, 
jump down to there. We'll be doing that in a minute. Huh. Wonder what that's all about. Ah, so down there we can see some friends. Merchant ahead. That's true. As a matter of fact, we can see him right over there. There he is. It's the male undead merchant. We'll be visiting him in a moment. Ah, up there you can see there's a guy shooting at us with a crossbow. Let's lure his friends over to here. Hello, ghosts. One of the things I don't like about the cleric is that they don't start with a hat, but, you know, that's not really that big of a deal. Uh, because I was on the stairs, it didn't want to do the repost animation there. I suppose it's fine. Let's go take care of this guy before he starts shoot keeps shooting at us. And we actually got a crossbow from him. Battle is timed at the end. The winner dons a what? A great crown? Huh? <laughs> okay. I think that's something for the arena uh, in the DLC later. <laughs> I don't know why that's their shield. Oh yeah, you can open this door here. It doesn't require a key or anything. Get a wooden shield from this. It's sort of the same thing as the east-west shield. It's slightly better. It would have been uh, an upgrade if we didn't pick up this dragon crest shield. So over here we can see one of my most hated enemies in the game. The undead soldiers with, sh with spears. And the way to deal with them is kicking them. Just kick the shield out of the way. Not too hard. Here we've got kind of an ambush coming up. He's just like, doo doo, oh look. And there's a guy with a battle axe behind the bookcase. Sadly, he did not drop his axe. But over here, hey, how you doing? Is the male undead merchant. What's this say? Try headshots. I'm gonna actually break his stuff and he doesn't care. Well now, you seem to have your wits about you, hmm? Then you are a welcome customer. I trade for souls. Everything's for sale. <laughs> so he sells stuff. Um, one of the things he sells is the residence key, which we actually want to get right now. If you kill him, you get it too. You can buy the bottomless box. I think there's another guy who sells this for either the same price or cheaper, and I don't really care about it right now. He'll also sell the repair box, but I know that they the way you can get it later is cheaper than that. Um, he will also sell various items. Uh, basic items, daggers, short swords, scimitars, uh, the hand axe. The hand axe is what uh, the um, pyromancer starts with, the club is what the deprived starts with, etc, etc. Uh, the hunter starts with the short bow. The shield we have starting with. And the heater shield is quite useful as an item. It's the shield that the warrior starts with. Um, and as it says, it's one of the smallest shields that offers 100% physical damage reduction. It's uh, It also has a slightly different property with parrying. As you can see, it blocks quite a bit of fire damage, too. It's a, it's a very good all-around shield. And it's quite cheap. It's only a, only 100. Or a 1,000. Uh, he also sells arrows and uh, the chain set, uh, which the Crestfallen Warrior is wearing, I believe, although he's not wearing the helm. He also sells some items, including fire bombs and the orange guidance soapstone, which is the item you use to uh, write messages. He sells Lloyd Salesman's uh, throwing knives, which aren't very useful, and repairs powder, which is uh, good for emergencies. Good to have some of that on hand. I usually don't carry around, though. We'll be buying some fire damp bombs from him later. 
things are getting treacherous in these parts. A horrible goat demon has moved in for now. And up above, there's that humongous drake and a bull demon too. If you stick around this place, it might end up being your grave. <laughs> now he has uh Here, yeah, I'm not here to chit chat. We talk business or we talk nothing at all. He's quite useful uh to keep around, but you can kill him and you'll get uh an Uchi katana for that, which is a sword well, a katana, which uh is one of it's one of the best weapons you can get this early in the game. Although, it's probably not as good as the one I have equipped for this character, um, at least until later. So we'll leave him alive, there's no reason to kill him right now. He'll, he also told us about the bosses of the area, and that Drake, which isn't technically a boss, but we'll see that later. But the goat and the bull demon are definitely bosses. What are you guys doing? So we picked up that crossbow, uh, but we can't use it right now because we don't have any ammunition for it. We could have bought some from the, the male undead merchant. He doesn't have a name, as far as I know. Uh, and the things I've read about it just call him that. I haven't read too much into like the backstory and, and official things about the game, so... Most of the stuff I have are just like stuff from the item descriptions and things like that. Which is quite thorough, actually. Get some throwing knives, which I said are not very useful. Uh, you could use them to th pull enemies, I guess. They cost about as much as arrows do, so you could pick up a lot of them. Um, and just use them if you want to. Some of the guys will drop them. Um, there's something else I picked up that I wanted to look at. Alright, the orange guide in soapstone. Um... Flow of time is distorted. To assist or deceive. Yeah, that's important to note. People will deliberately put messages that are bad down to troll people. Let's go ahead and equip that and demonstrate. So here we have that thing I was referring to before. Let's use this orange soapstone to leave a message. To make uh make people, you know, maybe know about this. So anybody in this area will will see this. It's not necessarily, you know, people near me, but I, I don't know. So, no, we don't want to use that. Back. Try. And it basically just has a different thing, a different, uh, I guess, dictionary of, of things you can use. So, actions. Say try jumping. So now, and the orange guided soapstone for it, its cheap price is actually infinite. So we can't write up our own message, but now. So let's follow our own advice and try jumping here. So now we can jump down onto that little ledge. Be wary of fall. That's right, if we fall down here, we will be back in that other area. And the stairs here are broken, which is why we couldn't use them before. Now here we are above the area, and we can get a, another light crossbow and some standard bolts. Now the crossbow is nice for, I guess, just basic damage. It also has very slow parameter requirements. And you can also have it equipped in one hand, so you can use a shield in the other hand. Um, but you can't zoom in and out with it, which makes it not as useful. Um, if you could do that, then it would be probably more useful than a bow. So we can jump off here. Or we could have jumped off in the other area and not taken any damage. <laughs> yeah, this stairs in this other room. Um, but you can't. And you would think, no, from what I know about crossbows, they have a flatter trajectory, that zooming in with a bow would not be all that helpful because you have to shoot it in such a... Uh, in such an arc that it would not necessarily be useful to know uh, to zoom in on things. So here we have a bonfire across this little bridge. And this room uh, has another shortcut in it, we can see here. And another set of broken stairs. This is going to be something we're going to see quite a bit, just blocking us off from new areas. We can see there's a ladder there. 
um, but it doesn't go all the way down. It's sort of like a fire escape, you have to extend it from above. So let's activate this bonfire. And we don't have enough souls to level up. So one of the things we can do with these souls is we can go... Let's go buy some fire bombs and see if that undead merchant has anything else to say. There we go. Parried him that time. Ah, that's, that's a good uh, example. When you are parrying or backstabbing someone, while you're doing the animation, you are invincible. Uh, so, while fighting big groups, oftentimes it's good to try doing that to avoid taking damage. You can see there, uh, when you attack most enemies and they block, they will still take damage. And one of the things about the straight sword is that they, uh, it has a different backstab animation, which is actually slightly shorter than the the maces that we were using earlier. Uh, I thought I dropped an item. These guys can drop their spears and their shield. The shield is actually really good. So, it's quite nice. Now, I probably have enough to buy the bottomless box now, but I'm still going to buy some, some fire bombs. Because I'm going to want some of those. Oh, there you are. Still keeping your marbles all together? Then go ahead, don't be a nitwit. Never hurts to splurge when your days are numbered. <laughs> He's rather nice. Yeah, I'm not here to wait. Okay. So let's just spend all of our money on fire bombs. 22 fire bombs. Thank you kindly. <laughs> so if I buy anything from him, does he ever say anything else? Oh, I hope you've brought plenty of souls. <laughs> Not actually. Yeah, I'm we talk. <sighs> what a waste of time. Go and fall off a cliff.